we're going to do a little bit of extraction technique today. All right, so you can see how the extraction works. What you will need is a stand, okay, to set your separatory funnel on. You will need a ring clamp also. The ring clamp should have a little bit of support on it so that it doesn't break your separatory funnel. This is what a separatory funnel looks like, okay, it's where you have um, a bulb like this and then you have this stopper over here. The stopper here is just like what you may have seen in the burettes, which means you can open this up and clean it up. And also you need to tighten it so that you can move this freely, okay, it shouldn't be so tight that you can't actually move it. And remember, this is open, this is closed, okay, so if it's perpendicular, it's closed, and if it is parallel to it, then it's open, okay, so when you're ready to uh, set your separatory funnel, this is where it's going to go. Before we place it in there, I also want to show you that you will need a stopper. There are two kinds of stoppers that you can have in your lab. So there can be this kind, which really is very convenient, and make sure the stopper actually fits in there completely. Remember, this is a ground glass joint, so the stopper should fit in it completely, okay? So either it's this kind, or you may have this kind of a stopper, okay, in which you have this flat top, and even if you have this one, it doesn't matter, it should still fit, okay, on there. So I'm going to use this one because this is a very specific one, and I'll show you this one also a little bit later. But anyhow, so what you will do is you will take your separatory funnel without the stopper and you will place it um, on the ring clamp, okay? And then make sure that you have something underneath it, okay? Because it's a very common mistake to actually keep the separatory funnel on there and forget that you actually have it on, all right? And then when you start pouring things in there, boom, everything comes down, okay? So you want to make sure that, you, first of all, you have something underneath it. Second of all, you want to make sure it's closed. And number three, you want to make sure that it is so much below that it, things don't splatter out of it. Okay, so they're actually inside um, over here. So then when you're getting ready for your extraction, then you need to pour stuff um, inside it. And you will probably be extracting an organic with inorganic, so which means an organic and an aqueous layer, okay, in there. So for that purpose, uh, you have these two things. Now, I have them like this. So you can clearly see, this is my distilled water, okay, and this one my aqueous, and here is my organic layer, which this one is dichloromethane, okay, so, but you can see clearly that uh, both of them are clear and colorless, okay, and so if you have issues, and like I have issues, when I have clear and colorless layers, I don't know what they really mean, okay, and so what I would do is I would label them, okay, either AQ, Okay, or A or something like that. So you know that there is actually water in it, some sort of a label. You can also write it on here if you want to on the white strip. So you can write A on there or H2O, whatever you want to, just so that you can differentiate between the two layers, okay? Because otherwise it will be hard for you to know, okay, which one is which. I forgot to. So when you're ready to pour in your, uh, your uh, solutions in the separatory funnel, you will need a funnel. So you can use a regular funnel or you can use a powder funnel. Whichever one fits in your uh, separatory funnel, you can use that one. I will go ahead and use the regular funnel because it's a little bit thin stem. Just don't make sure that you don't get too long of a stem, okay? Otherwise, the organic solvent will start evaporating right here, okay? So you don't want that to happen. So whatever you need to extract, you go ahead and pour that in. And then you will also pour in whatever you're extracting with. So if you're washing it with sodium bicarbonate solution or just with water, then you know you pour the second layer in. And the thing about the separatory funnel is it's used to separate two liquids which are immiscible, okay, in each other. So what you will see is you will see two layers, okay, in there. So hopefully you can see the two layers. Now you have to determine which is the aqueous layer and which is the organic layer. So if you know the densities already of the substances, so for example, I'm using dichloromethane, it's heavier than water, so I know that in my two layers, my bottom layer is my organic layer, because that's dichloromethane, and then water layer is going to be the one above. But if you're not sure as to which one is your water layer, which one is your organic layer, the best thing to do is pour a little bit of water okay, in your separatory funnel and see where it goes. So in this case, the water is staying on the top, which means my, my top layer is the, or, uh, the aqueous layer. Okay, and so then when you're ready for extraction, then you have to put the stopper on. So you can use this stopper, take it out. Now the technique here for holding the separatory funnel is very 
uh, critical okay so you want to hold the separatory funnel properly you want to hold the neck okay and then put your finger right here on the stopper and then this should be facing to yourself okay this uh, stop cork here should be facing to you this one should not be facing at anyone Okay, the separatory funnel should not be facing at anyone because what we're going to do is we're going to shake this and this is what does the extraction and then we're going to release the pressure okay and you heard that so that is the pressure and those are the vapors that are coming out from the dichloromethane which has been shaken up so it could be hexane dichloromethane whatever organic substance okay that might actually release some vapors when you're shaking it so you have to release the vapors, okay? This is how you would do it. So make sure your finger is tight right here on the stopper so it doesn't open up. And you have to do this part, you have to release the pressure or otherwise the stop part will fly off. Now, if you have the other stopper, which is this kind, you can use this too, okay? No problem. But now you wanna make sure that this is actually parallel to the stop cork over here, okay? So this stop cork and this one, they should be facing the same way because your finger should be actually perpendicular to this so that you have a good hold, okay? The other one was easier, but in this case, you wanna make sure your finger is perpendicular. It should not be like this, it should be like this, okay? And then you hold the separatory funnel again the same way, which is on the neck and your finger tightly over here, and then you give it a good shake and release the pressure, okay? As soon as you place the separatory funnel back on the ring clamp, make sure you remove the stopper. If you don't remove the stopper, then sometimes the pressure will build up and the stopper will go flying off, okay? So you don't wanna do that. So remove the stopper as soon as you have, in, um, have it on the uh, ring clamp. And then you can go ahead and release the lower layer, okay? And the lower layer now, remember, is our organic layer because uh, dichloromethane was heavier. Now, one of the other things that happens is when you have your stopper on there and you forget to remove it, once you start draining your uh, lower layer, at one point, it's going to stop, okay? And it's going to stop because there is no more air to release, okay? So there is a vacuum build up in there and suddenly you have nothing coming out, okay? And so at that point, what you need to do is you need to close this and remove the stopper. Okay, because that really is what is preventing the liquid from coming down. Okay, so now you go ahead and release uh, the bottom layer, collect it, okay, into whatever container you want to. And depending on what you're trying to collect, okay, if you're collecting the lower layer, you can leave a little bit of the lower layer right in the separatory funnel. So stop it right here and you can see there is a little bit left in there. So if there is too much emulsion over here, you can just leave that as it is. Or if you want, you can bring it down right to where the hole is and that is it. Okay, that's where you stop. If you are collecting the top layer, in that case, you would go ahead and drain everything. And then what you would do is you will take the separatory funnel and then you can pour it out into your flask that you want, okay? So you don't really have to drain it out from the uh, separatory funnel, although you could if you wanted to, okay? So if you want to drain that out, the top uh, layer also, you can very well do that, okay, as well. So either of those two things will work, okay? So this is how the separatory funnel works. If you need to do another extraction, then go ahead and pour everything back in there and again, use the same process, okay, to do the extraction. And then depending on what your waste is, please throw it in the proper waste container.